A chance defines a person. Most of you here, I dare to say, all of us here are so, so lucky in our birth circumstances. We are so lucky, chance of birth, which gives us a start in life. Actually, it allows us to be born. Chance of life, which enables us to be educated. Chance of birth, which empowers us to live with dignity and self-respect. Or else, we would have been a statistic. A statistic on infant mortality. A statistic on girls not being educated, deprived of basic education. A statistic on women maimed or even killed due to domestic violence. There are about 600 million women in our country and 25% of them do not see their fifth birthday, will not live to see their fifth birthday. That's it, 150 million women. This number is more than deaths in all the wars put together in the last 200 years. That is World War number one, World War number two, Holocaust. And these women, I tell you, are the victims of extreme, extreme discrimination. They're not allowed to be born because their birth, the families see that their birth is, doesn't benefit anybody, benefit the families. They're not, they're abandoned and they're also maybe sold, they could be sold to a trafficker. But even if they miss all this, eventualities, they're still the second class citizens, still the second class citizens. They could be abused, they could be abused after their marriage, even before their marriage they will of course denied of the basic education because the families see them as a burden, and in fact, if they are more educated, it is harder to get a husband who is more educated. Because in our culture, husbands should be at least one step above their wives. Then, after marriage, they could be abused. Abused physically, and verbally mostly. And these women take this as a very normal thing because they would have seen their mothers being abused by their fathers. And this will pass on to their daughters as a message. A message that they're very, very worthless. And I still cannot forget an incident when I visited Sujata, who was pregnant a long, long back. It was her second pregnancy. I knew her very well. And then the first child was a girl child. Second, she came to know it's a girl again. And obviously, she wants to abort. Family pressures in loss and her own feelings. Then I thought I'll do my bit. I went, I went to the family, tried to convince, tried some sort of uh, discussions went on and on on for an hour. She was talking about so many things, the things that is ever present crippling dowry 
That's what she keeps on talking. The family keeps on talking about this dowry. Leave alone anything else. Then, that was one thing. The other thing was the little Bhanu, two and a half years old, the first child, was looking at all of us, all the discussions with her bright big eyes. So attentively she was looking at us. Without a word. So I, I was very, very sure she understood everything. I'm sure she understood that she was, at least she understood that she was not wanted in this world. That she's unwelcome in this world. She's a burden to the family and her parents are waiting for her brother to come. This is so, so sad and this could have been any one of us, you, me, any one of us. And we are so lucky, it made me feel that we are so, so lucky, so fortunate to be born in families which do not discriminate us because of gender. Yes, all these thoughts made me welcome a little two and a half year old Radhika into my life. It was 1992 in a place called Kadapa in Andhra Pradesh, a very, very hot place, summer. And I came to know that this girl is abandoned on the streets. Her father killed her mother and she was left with no, no, absolutely no support. It could have been my own two daughters. I shivered at the thought that it could have been my daughters. I brought her home and then I called all my friends, family, and then with so much of long discussions, we decided that we would bring up a few children like our own. No more big agenda. No more thinking of social change. Just we thought we'll bring up a few kids just like our own. So started Aarti Home. Aarti Home for abandoned children. Aarti Home for abused children. Aarti Home for orphaned children. But later on, what I realized, this one girl became four girls, four children, and four became hundreds of children. But what struck us was 90% of these children are girls. So it is not abandonment of children. It is abandonment of girls, only girls. This made us think that taking care of these girls, taking care of, I mean, starting orphanages like Aarti Home is just a bandage to the deeper wound. The mothers, the voiceless mothers who would abandon their children you know, but in my journey, in this 25 years of journey, I went through a lot of ups and downs in my life. I was very irritated in the beginning, very angry in the beginning. Actually, I thought, why are these mothers so irresponsible, heartless? Why are they doing this? Abandoning their own children. Is it possible for any mother to do this? Then I started putting myself in their shoes. And I also tried to step in their world. Started visiting the villages, visiting the families. No mother wants to abandon their child. Which mother wants to abandon their own child who's born to her? Is it possible? No. Then I realized how voiceless how helpless, how powerless these women are. It is really surprising to see 
that they don't even have right over their own bodies. This made me think, yes, what do we do? What do we do now? Can we do something? Give them a chance to earn a little money. I didn't have big agenda. Just give them a chance to earn a little money so that maybe it will change their, their, change their lives. Maybe say in their families. So this is how we started job trainings. The first person who came to us for the job training was Parveen. She was really, really a daring person because she had to cross all the barriers and she had to really go against her family, her community, her religion to come out, step, to step out of the, her house. And then in no time she became an excellent seamstress. Her products got sold and she became really, I mean, if not rich, she was able to earn a lot of money. She was so happy and one, on a usual working day, she came to the work so smiling, bright, happy. And then when I said, what happened, Parveen? She said, my mother-in-law, gave me tea yesterday evening when I went back from <laughs> This small cup of tea goes beyond a cup of tea. It establishes her newfound status in her family, community, in her society. And you know, now she's a leader, a change maker. And she goes to the, every house to see that every pregnant woman in her community is very comfortable, good nutrition, and gets all the, uh, I mean, the things from the government. Government gives a lot of um, supple supplements, food supplements. So she sees that. And in her community, Every single child is attending school, whether it is a boy or a girl. And when she's walking on the road, she says, Amma, husbands are scared to beat their wives when I walk on the roads. So one Parveen, we trained about 20,000 people. Pramati, job trainings, workshops on rights, workshops on leadership trainings, and so many other trainings which give voice to the women. Yes, we were in our own world, a little world, in a small place, in the corner of one, I mean, in the world, a small corner in Andhra Pradesh, a call Kadapa. We were doing our own work, but around us, the situation for women was not too great. In 2001 census, it was one out of 20 girls killed. 2011, you all know that is one out of 10 girls are killed, which is really, really pathetic. We didn't know what to do. So why is this happening? Why this sharp fall? Kadapa was no different, but very fortunately, the mandals which we are working, we were working, we almost stopped killing the girls. And every child was going to school, irrespective of the gender. That gave us a lot and lot, lot of confidence. We thought we'll take a big step. Big step of seeing 
and big um, step of making the whole district the best place for girl to be born we wanted to see kadapa the best place for a girl to be born yes it's very great the idea was very great yes but what do we do ideas to implementation what do we do then we thought okay conversations coupled with programs programs which will give power tools knowledge to the women to ascertain themselves in their community to first of all to ascertain themselves in their family and to question the system and this we wanted to do with village meetings support groups and then leadership trainings employability training sensitizing each and every person in the district may it be religious leaders may it be professionals like gynecologists and radiologists who are the real people and then may it be teachers students lawyers police we wanted to do that but how again we in that little corner how can we do this very very fortunately as god sent we got support from european commission which made the platform very strong and this project we called it mana bidda that is my child whether it is a boy or girl it is same we wanted to go with an same message saying any child is my child every child deserves love care equal opportunity and encouragement yes we started this project and then let me tell you who is working in this project 25% of the people who are working in this project are arti girls who have been brought up right from their childhood just to tell you an example one of these girls is somika she was left at the gate when she was hardly walking and then just she crawled into the front door and there was a small bag where she had a small slate and a red dress such a sweet lovely girl and then luckily she did extremely well in her school she did very well in her college the junior college 12th standard and then she was about to go to college and i thought like any one of you she would be working for a multinational and i was visualizing all this for her and then she came to me and said amma i want to work for manabida project i resisted i said why but no she persisted she said no amma i don't want any girl to be abandoned like i was to be orphaned is painful ma but to be abandoned is really it hurts me this is what she told me then i said okay maybe she is sent by god at the right time to the right place for the right reason i said okay somika do it i absorbed her into the fam in the project and like her all the other girls about 16 of them they are working for the project and they're not taking it as a project mind you they're taking it as a movement the only agenda they have is girls or boys are the same give equal opportunities no abortions on the gender base and every child should go to school and just going not only to the lower uh, i mean the village people they're able to touch 
the police, the professionals, the gynecologists, the radiologists, every single person on the same platform, they're able to talk. That they have that passion under their skin because they came from that broken system. And they want to change the broken system from where they have come. I'm really proud of Aarti children, my children. Yes, you must be wondering what happened to Radhika. Radhika is now a very smart, confident young girl working for a large corporate hospital as a radiology technician. Like any one of you, very independent. Like any one of you. But she came from, her birth circumstances were not too good. Averse, very bad birth circumstances. But she bloomed. The birth circumstances, even if they are good, we can do a lot of things. Such children can do a lot of things. Now this movement is going beyond Aarti. Just to tell an incident. Last January 24th, National Girl Child Day, we conducted a number of competitions for almost more than 100 schools. And all very nice schools, the best schools in Kadapa district. They all participated. And then what happened? On the last day, we gave awards to all the prize winners. And the first winner, the awardee, a 13-year-old boy, when asked to speak for a minute, very spontaneously he came onto the stage and said, we'll go Aarti way. I will go Aarti way. And he offered the prize money to Aarti home. I believe this movement can go much further than one person and just Aarti, one institution. And now I really hope and I think that this hope has a chance now. My belief Artists believe has a chance. Thank you very much.